In this video, we'll be exploring the hilarious story about British Columbia's worst hotel guest. I'm sure you've heard the adage, truth is stranger than fiction, and this story definitely fits into that category. In 2001, a Nova Scotia man named Nick Burchill received a lifetime ban at the stately Fairmont Empress Hotel in Victoria. So let's hear exactly what happened in Mr. Burchill's own words from his 2018 letter to the Empress Hotel. Dear Empress Hotel, this may seem like an unusual request, but I write to you today seeking a pardon. 17 years ago, a string of unfortunate events led to my being banned from your hotel. I'd like to explain the incident. In 2001, I had recently joined my current employer. My employer was hosting a customer conference at the Empress, and it was my first event with the company. I told my Navy buddies that I was coming out west and I was asked to bring Brothers Pepperoni from Halifax. It's a local delicacy. But this was the Navy we're talking about. I brought enough for a ship. In a hurry, I had completely filled a suitcase with pepperoni for my friends. Some of it was wrapped in plastic, some in brown paper. I took whatever Brothers would sell me. This is the bag that the airline misplaced. The bag reappeared the next day. I knew that the pepperoni would still be good. It had only been at room temperature for a short time. It would, however, be quite some time before I could turn it over to my friends. Just to be safe, I decided that I should keep it cool. My room was a nice, big, front-facing room on the fourth floor. It was well appointed, but it did not have a refrigerator. It was April, the air was chilly. An easy way to keep all of this food cool would be to just keep it next to an open window. I lifted one of the sashes and spread the packages of pepperoni out on the table and on the windowsill. Then I went for a walk, for about four or five hours. When I had covered enough ground, I returned to the hotel. I remembered walking down the long hall and opening the door to my room to find an entire flock of seagulls in my room. I didn't have time to count, but there must have been 40 of them and they had been in my room eating pepperoni for a long time. In case you were wondering, Brothers TNT Pepperoni does nasty things to a seagull digestive system. As you would expect, the room was covered in seagull crap. What I did not realize until then was that seagulls also drool, especially when they eat pepperoni. I'm sure you've got an image in your head. Now remember that I've just walked into a room and startled all of these birds. They immediately started flying around and crashing into things as they desperately tried to leave the room through the small opening by which they had entered. Less composed seagulls are attempting to leave through the other closed windows. The result was a tornado of seagull excrement, feathers, pepperoni chunks, and fairly large birds whipping around the room. The lamps were falling. The curtains were trashed. The coffee tray was just disgusting. I waded through the birds and opened the remaining windows. Most of the gulls left immediately. One tried to re-enter the room to grab another piece of pepperoni, and in my agitated state, I took off one of my shoes and threw it at him. Both the gull and the shoe went out the window. By this time, I was down to one gull left in the room, but it was a big one and it did not want to leave. As I chased it, it ran around the room with a big hunk of pepperoni in its gob. In a moment of clarity, I grabbed a bath towel and jumped it. It started to freak out, so I wrapped it in the towel and threw it out of the window. I had forgotten that seagulls cannot fly when they're wrapped in a towel. This all happening fairly quickly, and this is mid-afternoon. The Empress hosts a very famous and very popular high tea. I suspect this is where the large group of tourists was heading when they were struck first by my shoe, then a bound up seagull. The seagull was unharmed, by the way. 
Let's go back to my little housekeeping issue. The room was bad. There was a lot of damage. I was new to my company and I was really trying to make a good impression at this important event. I decided that I would carry on for now and handle this whole thing later. I then realized that I only had a few minutes before an important dinner and that I only had one shoe. I made my way to one of the side doors and recovered both the shoe and the towel that were laying in some wet soil bare the walking path. The shoe was a mess. I took it back to the room. By this time I had closed the windows and the air was becoming quite ripe with the smell of digested pepperoni and fish. I went to the washroom and rinsed the mud off my shoe. It cleaned up nicely, but now I had one wet dark shoe and one dry light colored shoe. In retrospect, I should have just wet the dry shoe. Instead, I chose to dry the wet shoe using the little hair dryer. It was actually doing quite well. I had the hair dryer jammed in there and the shoe was drying quite nicely. Then the phone rang. I walked into the next room to answer it and the power goes off. It turns out that the hair dryer had vibrated free of the shoe and had fallen into the sink full of water and the GFI didn't seem to be 100% functional. I don't know how much of the hotel's power I knocked out, but at that point I decided I needed help. I called the front desk and asked for someone to come help me clean up a mess. I can still remember the look on the lady's face when she opened the door. I had absolutely no idea of what to tell her. So I just said, I'm sorry, and I went to dinner. When I came back, my things had been moved to a much smaller room. I thought that was the end of it all until I was told that my company had received a letter banning me from the Empress, a ban that I have respected for almost 18 years. I have matured and I admit the responsibility for my actions. I come to you hat in hand to apologize for the damage I had indirectly come to cause and ask you to reconsider my lifetime ban from the property. I hope that you will see fit to either grant me a pardon or consider my 18 years away from the Empress as time served. Thank you very much for your consideration. Sincerely, Nick Burchill. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there are a few things you can do to help support our channel. Give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and leave a comment. Let us know if there's anything you would like us to cover in a future video. For more content about Canada, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell icon to be notified of our next video upload.